Good morning. Well, we're still looking at this fifth chapter of John's Gospel. There's a lot in this chapter. But then as he goes on through this chapter, Jesus speaking to the people who are challenging him, challenging him because of what he is doing and the way he's speaking and the way he's acting. He says, I, remember John the Baptist? He testified to me. He told you that I was coming. He told you my ministry was about to start. He said, you search the scriptures. You're always searching the scriptures. But you still don't recognize me. You still don't see who I am and what I'm doing. You're still rejecting me. He said, not that my testimony depends upon John the Baptist. Just look at the miracles. Just look at them, what I'm doing in the world. And then make up your mind whether this is good or whether this is bad. Later on in the gospel, Jesus is going to heal a man who had been born blind. Now, people did go blind in this area because of the dust and because of different infections. It very often affected their eyesight. But when a person was born blind, that was a different thing altogether. And this man had been born blind. In fact, the apostles who see him point to him, to Jesus, and they say, um, what's caused this? Why is this man born blind? Is this the effect of sin <coughs> in his life, in his parents' life? Why has he been born blind? And Jesus says, no, this is nothing to do with sin. This is just something which has happened within the creation. This is something which everybody understands and knows about. This is something which is due to our very fallen nature. But he says, this man as well is going to be used by God because the Father had already showed Jesus this. This man is going to be used to show people the power, my power and who I really am. And he goes up to the man and he mixes some mud and things and a drop, small drop of spittle. People thought spittle was very healing. Although I heard recently about <laughs> an American evangelist who had to apologize to his congregation because when somebody came forward with something wrong with his eyes, he had, in fact, taken his own spittle and rubbed them in the man's eyes. And there was a terrible protest about him. You know, this is oh, that's such a crude thing to do. And the man got up the following week and said, yes, I looked at the um, recording of it, and I'm sorry. I was just carried away. And he wanted to do it the way Jesus has done it. You see, but when Jesus heals, he often uses a different method every time. On this occasion... Um, he used some clay from the ground and a drop of spittle and he rubbed it together to make a paste. He put it on the man's eyes. He said, now go to the pool of Siloam and wash. It was a pool there in Jerusalem. And the man went and washed and suddenly he had sight. He had sight given to him. He could now see for the very first time in his life. And he goes racing back to his family and his friends. He says, look, I can see, I can see and they said, we don't understand. He looks like the same man, but how can he be seeing when he was born blind? It didn't make sense. And the Sanhedrin call him in and they say, what happened? He said, well, this man, Jesus, he, he made this paste and he, he put it on my eyes and he said to me, go and wash in the pool of Siloam and now I can see. And they say, well, we don't understand. How has it happened? And the man almost gets frustrated with him. And it's the most beautiful of testimonies. He says, I was blind, now I see. It's as simple as that. I was blind, but now I see. And they said, well, this can't happen. This, is, this man's a sinner. He said, well, I don't know about him being a sinner, but God must be blessing him and be with him because I was blind and now I see. You see, this in a sense has got to be our testimony as well. I was blind. I didn't understand what God was doing. But God has blessed me with his Holy Spirit. And now I see. It's the simplest of testimonies. I was dead, but now I'm alive and I can never die again. I was out in the world and lost, but I understood what Jesus had done. And the Holy Spirit revealed what Jesus had done in my life. And I feel his presence with me. I see it all around. I look out the window in front of me. You can't see this. But out the window in front of me, there's some wonderful trees and a lovely garden. 
And I thank God for the sight of it, but not just for the sight of it, because I know he has created it. He's actually done this. He has created it. And everything I see and everywhere I go, I live in a very beautiful place. I live in Highcliffe near Christchurch. And I can go out sometimes on the um, seafront and look out across the bay just as the sun is setting. And suddenly all those mellow lights light up the bay. And I'm standing absolutely amazed because I know that my Savior, my God, has created this. That Jesus is literally holding it in existence at this moment. Do you know that? That's the point. And he's holding it there and he's showing it to me. And he's saying, see what I've done. See what I've done. Look at this world I've made. It's a beautiful world. Look at it and know what I've done. And I've done it so that you can enjoy it. That's right, talking to me, because you can enjoy it. But talking to you as well. He wants you to enter into this experience of looking at the world around you and knowing that he has created it. And he has created it so that you can enjoy it. Amen.